What's up guys, how you all doing? Adam here and I am back for another video. And that was a sprightly start, I must say, considering the couple of weeks that I've had, it's been ridiculously busy and hectic as always. But that was a good start to a video. Come on guys, that was a good start. Now, in this video, I'm gonna to chat to you guys about something which I get a ridiculous amount of questions about. And that is, why on earth do I have so much storage? And it's a good question, and it's something I'm not surprised that people are intrigued about. And I'm gonna talk about that in this video. I'm gonna talk about a few things. First of all, how much storage do I have? Second of all, how do I have all of this storage? And how do I actually present that storage to my machines in terms of technology and brands and vendors and all that kind of stuff? And then in addition to that, I'm gonna tell you why I have all of that storage and what I use it for. And then as a little kind of sweetener on the end, I'm gonna tell you how I make money from that storage as well because there's no point spending out ridiculous amounts of money on storage only to have it sit there and not give you a return on your investment. It's different if you've got you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 terabytes even. There's plenty of things that you could store on that and use all of that information up for personal usage, but there's no real need to have probably 500, 800, 1,000 terabytes. I'm guessing 1,000 terabytes, is that a petabyte? Let me know in the comments, I'm not too sure. Let's start off going through this little list. First of all, how much storage do I have? Well, split across two locations, I've got close to a thousand terabytes of storage. Now, like I say, I'm, I'm, I think that's a petabyte, but let me know down in the comments below. That's a lot of storage. Now, I have personal things which use a lot of storage. I have YouTube videos which use a lot of storage. 4K videos are obviously pretty big, especially in their kind of raw format before you start encoding them out to uh, H.264 or whatever your preferred codec may be. I've got loads of family photos. I think I've got close to 100,000 photos on my iPhone. There's a lot of data. I've got a complete TV archive of all of my favorite TV shows that I use the QNAP boxes to download for me via Sonar. Um, I've got a whole bunch of movies which I love. There's loads and loads of stuff. And like I say, you can kind of easily sort of start wrapping up 50, 60, 70 terabytes in that. But a thousand terabytes, why on earth would I need? A thousand terabytes. Well, the answer to that is question is that I don't necessarily need it for my personal use, but I've chosen to do it for some very, very specific reasons, and I'll come on to that a little bit later. So that's how much storage I've got. Now, an important part of this kind of story is my internet connection at home. I've got a full fiber to the premises, one gigabit up and down internet connection that comes directly into my house. It's provided by a company called Truly. I'll leave all the links down in the video description below. They're an absolutely incredible company. I literally get a one millisecond ping and I get the full gigabit up and down, even in full duplex, which means using them both at exactly the same time, up and down. And if you wanted to, you can even have multiples of those coming in to the house if you wanted to. In addition to that, I've got an off-site premises, which is a completely separate location somewhere else in the world, which again has got an extremely fast internet connection, and I've almost got an identical setup on that end that I've got on this end as well. If you watch my Instagram, and I hope that you do, I'll leave links to that down in the video description, you'll see as well that I also have a bunch of Dell Enterprise servers. And again, I've got a similar amount here as I have in my offsite location. And later on in this video, you'll understand exactly why I do have all of this kit. So the next question is, what is the kit that you're using? Well, you guys have seen a lot of these videos that I do. You've seen my setup videos, you've seen all of this stuff, and you, you guys know that I use, most of all, QNAP NAS devices. Why do I use QNAP? Well, first of all, they're a great company to work with. Um, second of all, their support is fantastic. Third of all, I think they have a little bit of an edge in terms of the enterprise market when it compares to other NAS providers that you've got out there. Although, if someone wants to prove me wrong, leave it down in the comments below. Um, that's just my kind of take on it and they're just that little bit more flexible, that little bit more designed for the enterprise market. This is just my personal experience and I've obviously used all these devices for a long time as you guys know. 
What ones do I use? Well, I love the TVS 1282 boxes on this particular location because they have the Thunderbolt connectivity should I want to use it. Now I've got the T and the T3. One is a Thunderbolt 2, one is a Thunderbite. Thunderbite? Arr! Uh, one is a Thunderbolt 3. Thunderbolt 2 had a two had a 3 meter uh, cable distance limit. Thunderbolt 3's got a 2 meter cable distance limit, which is kind of restricting. So most of the time I use them in their native 10 gigabit internet, uh, sorry, 10 gigabit ethernet format, which is spread all around the house. And it gives you huge flexibility, fantastic performance, and it's just a great way to use these devices. Inside those NAS devices, I've got Seagate discs. I roll with Seagate because I've just got great experience with their products. They go give fantastic support. They're very readily available should you have a problem. And the discs are readily available when you want to expand, giving you that, that con continuity amongst brand and model as well. They don't change up their models too much. So you can get bunches of discs that match in together as you kind of expand. I've also got expansion boxes as well. And that is what enables me to have that close to 500 terabytes in a tiny little cupboard like that over there. Now, a lot of people use RAID setups for resilience. Me personally, the way that I organize everything is I have resilience in the number of boxes that I've got. And there's a couple of reasons I do that. I use RAID zero across all of my NAS devices, which gives me that ultimate performance. And then what I do is I mirror between the two. So it's a bit like a RAID 10, but instead of having a RAID 10 in each device, I have a RAID 0 in one device, a RAID 0 in another device, and then I mirror the two via different technologies that are built directly into the QNAP product. Now, the next question is, why on earth do I need that amount of storage? And the answer is actually fairly simple. Now, I use a lot of VMware in my job, my IT company. I have uh, a lot of Citrix products. I have a lot of Hyper-V uh, situations going on. And I need multiple environments for each one of those in order for me to be able to uh, train myself, train other people, practice, set up labs, all these different kinds of things. And it uses a ridiculous amount of storage. If you want to set up a basic environment, for example, for uh, maybe a new customer to, to demo them a solution or something that's got full-blown uh, hypervisors with uh, virtual desktop and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. By the time you start building it out with domain controllers and file servers and print servers and everything else, the storage gets eaten up fairly quickly. And that is one of the reasons that I utilize such a huge amount of storage. Now, how do I present the storage from the NAS boxes to my enterprise servers? There's loads of ways to do it. You can use NFS, you can use iSCSI, you can use simple network shares. There's a whole bunch of different ways to present that storage to the enterprise Dell servers and, and that's exactly what I do. And it's much easier to do it that way rather than having huge amounts of local storage on each one of those enterprise servers because it gives you flexibility in the way that you move things around. So that's a, that's a big chunk of storage right there that I need available and I need it to be extremely fast, hence the RAID 0. But that still probably doesn't account for the vast amount and it also doesn't explain having a similar amount in a completely separate location, again with very fast internet access. So, moving on. There's another thing that I do and it's part of my IT solutions that I offer and that is that I offer full business data center backup and business continuity in terms of the back end infrastructure. So what that really means if we break it down is that say for example you've got a business, they've got a couple of physical servers with a bunch of virtual servers that reside on them and they want full up to date backups maybe by the hour or the day in complete off-site locations that are fully encrypted, fully secure, fully insured, etc., etc., I offer that with the additional benefit option, if you like, of business continuity. Now, it's one thing replicating everybody's backups off-site. That's not the most difficult thing in the world to do. The QNAP boxes have got absolutely, like 
mounds and mounds of different facilities for doing backups uh, from net backup to um, the hybrid backup. There's loads and loads of tools that are built into these boxes, QSync and various others that enable you to do these backups. And if you use it alongside other technologies like Veeam, for example, they become incredible backup devices. But there's an extra step to that, which brings the enterprise servers into the mix, which obviously I use for my labs, but also it gives me the ability to potentially spin up a complete customer's environment on my own systems, either here or in my other data center, like that. They would have extremely up-to-date backups, depending on the options that they've chosen. Chosen It could be up to the hour, could be six hours, could be 24 hours, could be 48 hours, could be a week. But it gives me the ability to not only have complete off-site backups, should they have some kind of cyber attack or maybe some kind of crypto um, ransom attack or something like that, but it also gives me the ability to simply turn that stuff on like the click of a finger and it's very, very easy for me to do so. And all I've got to do is change a couple of DNS records and they carry on running like absolutely nothing has happened. Now, should um, a business have some kind of extremely bad disaster situation, flooding, fires, terrorist attack, who knows these days, it means that should that happen, they don't even have to worry because I can simply turn it all on in a brand new location, completely secure and encrypted, and instantly they're back up and running again. Now, it's never good enough to have just one data center. So what I like to do is in some situations, replicate some of that stuff down into my environment that I've got here. And that is how I turn storage into income, which gives you guys a kind of rough idea why I have all this storage, why it makes so much sense to spend so much money on this storage and what it provides in the way of income, return on investment, and also facilities for me to progress myself with my labs and also to be able to do various demonstrations uh, and also, like I say, the off-site replicated backup and business continuity. So this whole thing has been a lot of me talking. It's not really something I can show you much B-roll for, but if you guys watch my Instagram, you'll kind of see me every so often take pictures and videos of the servers and the storage and, and different data centers and stuff like that. And hopefully it gives you a little bit of an insight as to why I have all of this storage, which you guys asked me about a hell of a lot. So I hope that's answered a few questions. I'm sure it's probably raised a lot of questions. Um, feel free to leave me in the comments down below. I try and answer as many as I can. It is difficult to get back to everybody across all different mediums with uh, work and family commitments and everything else, but I do try. So drop them down in the YouTube comments if you've got uh, a question about that. I'll also leave links to some of the products that I use down in the video description in case you wanted to do something similar yourself. If this video creates questions of other varieties off the back of it that you'd like to see full videos about, again, leave that down in the comments below as, as a suggestion. If you're still here with me at the end, you're the best. Thank you very, very much. I would really appreciate it if you went and smashed that like button for me. Subscribe if you're not already share as well if you can it's always good to share sharing is caring and i will see you all in the next video peace